Have you made adjustments to your meals and started moving more in an attempt to lose weight? Do you feel like you're doing everything right, but you're not getting any results or you're not getting the type of results that you'd hope for and you're secretly wondering whether or not it has anything to do with the fact that you don't count your calories? If you're wondering whether or not it's time for you to start counting calories on your weight loss journey so that you can get the results that you wanted, then you're in luck because that's what we're going to be discussing in this video. We're going to be talking about signs that maybe it's time to visit, you don't have to live there, but to visit calorie counting on your weight loss journey. Hello and welcome to my channel. And if you have been here before, welcome back. My name is Conceda Thomas. I'm a food and fitness strategist and I help women over 40, like me, lose 30 plus pounds and keep it off without diet or excessive exercise. And part of how I do that is by helping my clients understand which part of the journey they're in and which tools they have at their disposal and which tools may be most effective for the phase of the journey that they're in. And in that regard, sometimes calorie counting comes into the equation. So I feel like I have to give a little bit of context because if you follow me for any amount of time, if you watch my videos, you know that I do not like the D word, other than the fact that we all have a diet. <laughs> we all have a diet, it's what we eat. Um, dieting, I definitely have a checkered past with dieting. It's not something that um, I believe that you have to use. And for many of us, many of people, my clients who are drawn to me and people who watch my videos, um, they have similar stories, right? Maybe that's why we're even connected. And so many of us have like this almost visceral reaction anytime someone talks about like counting calories because we have been there, we have done that, we have gotten the t-shirt, um, we have done it in a way that lends to obsession and just like all of the things that we are hoping to avoid and to never revisit. So we may be a little bit hesitant to even listen to anything where anybody is discussing calories. So if that's you, I totally understand that. At the same time, you've heard me say before, we don't have to count calories, but calories do count. So even if you find through this video that, oh my gosh, that applies to me, that applies to me, that applies to me. Oh my gosh, does that mean that I'm doomed and I'm gonna have to be one of those like, you know, food accountants counting and tracking for the rest of my life? The answer is no, but there may be some utility in a brief sense of paying attention to your calories. So when I say calorie counting, that's really what I'm talking about. But you know, when it comes to just titles and people understanding what I'm talking about, that's why I use that title. I even hesitated to use it because I really don't believe that anyone should have to count calories for the rest of their lives. So now that you've gotten that full disclaimer, let's go ahead and jump into it. So. Sign number one that it may be time for a brief sense of calorie counting on your weight loss journey is that you have already gotten really good at and really consistent with prioritizing protein, veggies, and water. So if you don't know, one of the reasons why myself and my clients put such a heavy emphasis on getting protein at every meal, getting, you know, three green servings of veggies a day, having enough water, etc., etc., all the things when it comes to the protein, veggies, and water is because those nutrients, those elements in a meal literally do help us stay fuller longer, be fuller on fewer calories, and all of the things connected to gentle, more natural caloric deficits. Being able to create a caloric deficit without having to force a caloric deficit. What happens when we optimize our protein intake and our veggie intake and our water intake is that we will be fuller on fewer calories. So if we couple that with a little bit of mindfulness, if we couple that with building our meals in a figure friendly way, more on that later, um, then what will happen for most of us is there will be a natural just decrease in consumption over time that will lend itself to weight loss without necessarily saying, okay, I have to cut 200, 300, however many calories off of you know my day each day in order to make this weight loss result happen. However, 
sometimes either if someone doesn't know how to or doesn't consistently practice building meals in a figure friendly way or there may be some other considerations they may indeed be experiencing those benefits you know they're fuller faster they're fuller on fewer calories they're fuller longer more naturally but for whatever reason they're still consuming all of the extra then they may find themselves either in you know a steady state when it comes to caloric to calories maybe they're at maintenance level or they're in a caloric surplus because even though they're prioritizing protein veggies and water you know there are some other things happening outside of that that still um makes it so that they're not in a caloric deficit and therefore they're not losing weight so if you're already prioritizing those things and your intention is to lose weight and you're finding that you're not losing weight it may be may be time for a brief stint spent paying attention to your calories so that you can see what is blocking your results and so that you're able to address that and then you're able to get out of that calorie counting state and go back to a more intuitive way of eating. Number two, you already have a habit of daily movement. You know, I always say like you cannot out train, you know, indiscriminate eating, but at the same time, daily movement does help in terms of creating weight loss. And I'm not talking about hardcore workouts, I'm just talking about doing what God made our bodies to do, which is to move, <laughs> to function, to be up and about and around. Like, you know, when we create, when we were created, we did not have computers and, and cameras and cell phones and the internet and everything was not at our fingertips. We could not, you know, order groceries by wiggling our fingers. We had to actually literally go out and like till the land and maybe hunt down the animals. So, you know, by nature, we are moving way less than we were designed to move unless we are intentionally creating daily movement. And then that lack of daily movement, that lack of using our human ability to move can sometimes lead to difficulty in weight loss. But if you find that you're already, you've addressed that, you know, you've already done the first thing I mentioned and you have a habit of daily movement. So that's not the issue. That is not what is keeping you in a caloric surplus and, you know, making it hard for you to lose weight. Then again, it may be time for a brief stint and paying attention to calories. Okay, clue number three that maybe it's time to pay attention to your calories is you're already getting enough sleep. So if you can't tell, I'm really just ticking down the list of things that could be standing in your way of creating a weight loss result that do not have to do with becoming more meticulous with your calories. And this one can get tricky because people are like, Conceda, sleep, rest, recovery, that has no calories. What does that have to do with the equation? How does that fit into the calculus? Remember from my intro, I said I work with women over 40 who wanna lose 30 plus pounds. And over 40, and for many of us even before that, our hormones start to play a bigger role in whether or not we're able to lose weight, whether or not we're holding on to weight, where the weight is coming. And one of the things that I will just raise my hand and say that I'm guilty of, and so many of the clients that I work with are guilty of is burning the midnight oil, burning the candle at both ends. And when we do that, we create a sort of disruption in our hormones. And so even when we are eating right, et cetera, it may be harder for us to lose weight or we may find that we're gaining weight even though nothing else has changed. So assuming that that's not the case, assuming your sleep is already in order, your daily movement is already in order, and like I mentioned, those protein, veggies, and water, if you're going down this list in this video and you're like, no, address that, no, address that, no, address that, then the sign is getting bigger and brighter that maybe for you, it's time to spend a brief amount of time paying attention to your calories because you're literally eliminating all of the other factors that could be holding your results back. All right, I have more where that came from, but before I get into that, let me know. Do you count calories? How do you determine when it's time to count calories and when you're able to eat more intuitively? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Just drop a comment below and join the conversation. All right, number four is you're already practicing portion control. So, you know, we're going down that list. If you've gotten this far and everything else is in order, maybe you don't need to count calories because maybe the, the issue is portion control. I will say that I work with many women who, when we first start working together, literally it feels like magic, both to them and to me. You know, they start walking, they get the proper amount of sleep, they're getting some water and some vegetables, they're like e eating enough protein and like weight is falling off and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so easy. I can't believe that I've done all these programs and ordered, 
you know, boxes of shakes at bars and gone to this. Sometimes even I've gone to this medical weight loss place and I wasn't able to get results or keep results like how this is working. Like who knew this was all I had to do? Well, the truth of the matter is, is for many of my clients in the beginning, that is all they have to do. But sometimes they come to a point in their journey where I call it riding it to the wheels fall off. They've already rolled that particular car. The wheels have fallen off. You know, their body is more balanced. Their body is used to getting sleep and movement and the proper nutrients from, you know, the water and the veggies and the protein. And now they have to dial things in a little bit and they have to pay attention to calories a little bit more, but we we may not be wanting to, we, me or them go into that place where, okay, now I'm tracking and I'm trying to hit a certain number. So we may place more focus on the portion control. Like, okay, before we were just trying to make sure you got veggies, make sure you got water, get you to go to sleep. Let's revisit the portion control. Like, you know, when you had said you had rice with this meal, how much rice was it? Was it two cups of rice, half a plate of rice? Oh, half plate, okay. Well, that is where we now have room to make adjustments to continue to get results without counting calories. But let's say you're like, Conceda, nope, I've been watching your videos. That is not the case with me. My portions are tight. Okay, well then maybe, <laughs> maybe it's time to take a brief time, a brief stint of paying attention to the calories so that you can get awareness around where, where what's happening, why it is that you are eating and moving to lose weight, but not having that happen. So the fifth and final thing you want to consider if you're trying to determine whether or not it's time for you to count calories in your sustainable weight loss journey is if you eat and drink a lot of store-bought items. So this could be packaged foods, this could be, you know, the kava bowls, the chipotle bowls, etc. However, um, if you are eating and drinking foods daily, multiple times a day, um, that you buy from stores, it may be worthwhile to take a brief period of time counting calories. And here's what I mean. And this is not just off the bat in general, but this is if you know what can see that I've been humming along in my weight loss journey and I'm not getting results now, or I've started my weight loss journey and while I've made appropriate adjustments, I'm not getting results. The reason why I say, you know, if you are eating things outside of your home or if you're buying things outside of your home, it's because we often assume that if I make a bowl at home and it has chicken and rice and lettuce, etc., you know, it's about this many calories, assuming we're calorie aware. Or if, let's say we're not calorie aware, we just know that I'm able to make these same things at home and you know eat them regularly and I get results. And now I'm buying them out, maybe I'm going through a busy season at work or things are busy with the family, so I'm buying things outside of the home and like all of a sudden I'm not getting results. Well, let me just tell you, <laughs> you will be surprised if you pull up you know one of your calorie tracking apps on your phone and you input you know, Chipotle, I had this, or Kava, I had this. You may be surprised, shocked, <laughs> at how different the calorie count will be for what you would typically make at home and what you may get outside of the home. And also, when you are maybe, even if we're not talking about getting food, whole meals, but even just snacks and buying things in packages, oftentimes when we're not counting calories, we may not be paying as much of attention to like serving size. And I gave an example in a previous video how I bought a different brand of tortilla chips and was like horrified to find out that a serving about 200 calories was only six chips. And I was used to having something more like 15 chips for the same amount of calories. So if you are finding that you're eating a lot of your foods from outside of the home, a brief period of time getting familiar with the calorie count in those foods by way of putting them in a tracking app, looking them up, seeing how that adds up over a day may be really, really helpful because you'll likely be able to find where you're over consuming and didn't even realize it. So even though you are making intentional choices with the types of meals or snacks that you're choosing, you may still find that the calories are adding up, you're getting more than you need, that's what's blocking your results and a brief stint spent paying attention to the calories can help you identify those things make the necessary tweaks and then go back to a more intuitive way of eating. So again, this video came with a big disclaimer because I know the whole calorie counting conversation can be 
a sensitive one, but I don't want it to be because there is utility in becoming aware of the calories, you know, of foods that you consume all the time. It just may not be a first step, but it's important to know when you may need to foray into that arena and become more calorically aware. So if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so that you're notified when new videos are published. If you'd like to hear from me more frequently, go ahead and click my Instagram link down in the description below so that you can connect with me over there. If you just like hearing the way I break things down, if you find that it stretches you and makes you think about things differently and maybe turn things over a few more times than normal, you can go ahead and just have a feast over on my podcast. I have over 100 episodes recorded over there for you. And if you'd like more direct support and accountability with implementing what you're learning here on this channel to create your own sustainable weight loss success story, go ahead and check out my signature program. It's called Get It Off, Keep It Off one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can get to the program page from the link below in the description. And if you find it's a good fit, go ahead and apply. And if the wait list is up, if, you, if applications are not available, go ahead and add your name to the wait list so that you can be the first to be notified when spots are available. That's all I have for you today, Fierce Friend. Until next time, stay fierce.